Hi, it's Bibi Cameron. Welcome to the third part of three video tutorials to show you how I use Picture Perfect from Stampin' Up to make a variety of projects. This set was launched in the Occasions Catalog from Stampin' Up 2016 and is in the page 37. You will find all these images here. This is a multi-step stamp set and for the video today I'm going to be using the Hummingbird images. You will notice that the stamps are the same size than the images in the brochure. In the first part of this video, I show you how I use these four stamps here to stamp a perfect aligned hummingbird. And I stamped these images on vellum just to show you how they look. This one is that one, the one here is this one, and finally, this one is this one in blue. So when you overlay the stamped images, you are going to build a hummingbird, like so. In previous videos, part one and part two of this video tutorial, I'm showing you how easy and fun is using multi-step stamps to make different projects. And I'm also sharing in previous videos tips and ideas about ink color combinations. And today, I want to share with you about artistic stamping. You can see here the difference between a normal image and the artistic stamped image. I have called this technique artistic stamping because when you apply the technique to your cards, they will look like a small piece of art, like a painting. And now, let me show you how I achieve this look and feel. I'm going to use Chrome K ink to stamp this image on watercolor paper. This image is this one in the stamp. It's the solid image. And I'm going to use the second generation of ink because this ink is a quite bit dark. So I just need a lighter shadow. You barely can see it. You see, when you start stamping by this image, you will find a little bit challenging to be able to align the images on top. But to achieve an artistic look, I found this is the best way. So now I'm going to stamp the second image, which is this one in the stamp. I'm going to use a bright ink. I'm using here Tangelo Twist, but you can also use Pumpkin Pie or any other bright, bright ink. At this point, you need to take your time to be able to align the images. If you see, you cannot see the image which is underneath. So do your best. It's not important if you don't get this completely perfectly aligned because we are going to transform this image. When I was filming this video, I just noticed something really important. Why I could not align the image while I was filming. You see here, what I was doing wrong. Then I just found that the position of my body when I'm stamping is key, important. My face needs to be there, there, just there, on top of the image, not in diagonal. The difference between these images is the position of my body. So when I stamped this one, I was just on top, there. And when I stamped that one, it was far from my body, just there, you, very, very far from my body, just because the camera was on top but not my eyes so this is a very silly tip but might help you to get a nice image and now i'm going to stamp the next image which is this one and i'm going to use a very dark ink a water-based ink this is the stamp and i'm going to use early espresso and i'm going to use full generation of ink so i bring the paper as close to my body as possible and i start stamping and I make sure that my stamp is completely covered by the ink. And then I do my best to align the images. In the first part of this video tutorial, I explain how to do this in a very different way. If you find this way today a bit complex, just go and do it the other way. Give it a try. Any link of interest is just underneath this video. And now I'm going to press this stamp down, applying evenly pressure, and I'm going to leave it for a while. You can organize the impacts you are going to use for the next step. 
while the watercolor paper is absorbing the ink. To start applying the artistic stamping technique, I'm going to need any white permanent ink. As I don't want this ink to blend with the water-based inks I'm going to apply as well. Pigment inks or even acrylic paints will do the job. Now I'm going to remove the stamp from the paper and that's how I get a kind of darker image. It's not completely perfect because this is watercolor paper and it has a lot of texture. It's different when you are stamping on whisper white cardstock. And now I'm going to start applying the technique and you will see how easy it is to become an artist using a stamping up multi-step stamps in this technique. I hope you enjoy it. Using a clean and dry sponge, I'm going to start by applying the white ink on the head of the hummingbird and the wing. Don't be scared to put a lot of white ink on top. Then leave it dry for a few minutes. When the pigment ink has dry, I'm going to use the fine tip of a stamping dry marker to highlight the image borders or the image edges, like so. You can also create a little bit of dimension in this image by tracing a perpendicular line like so in the edge of that wing. And if you want to add a light, you can use the other tip of the marker and add some strokes of ink in those parts of the image in which you feel there are lines going up, like so. Then I'm going to use early espresso ink with water to apply a watercolor technique, very simple. I'm going to reduce the ink. I need a very light shadow. And I'm going to apply it and blend it with the orange ink underneath. Apply a little bit more of ink where I think that it's convenient to apply some shadows. To create shadows, I'm going to apply strokes of ink that goes from the edge of the image towards the center. And I'm going to apply water to blend the inks and also to reduce the intensity of the color. In those areas where you feel the color is too intense, you can just apply clear water and with a towel lift the color. You will get a fun watercolor effect in that area of the wind. This is more an intuitive process. To add movement, I extend the image lines, like so. I call that like that because you know I'm not English speaker, so I don't know how to say that. So what I'm doing here is like stretching or pulling out these lines in the image. Then go ahead and apply some water, like so, to extend even more those lines. By doing this, you are also applying a dramatic effect to that image. And to finish blending the inks, you can also apply water here in this area, so the brown ink is going to get blended with the orange ink underneath. And it's going to get a lighter color. I'm going to use a pigment ink now I don't have the Stampin' Up! white ink. I should try this in the next video with the Stampin' Up! white ink. So I'm using this one that I have handy and I'm going to leave it dry. This ink takes forever to dry, so I'm going to drink a coffee and then I'm going to come back. <laughs> okay, my image is looking better. I'm happy with the results. The inks dry, they look a little bit different. So now I'm going to use Archival Black ink from Stampin' Up! and I'm only going to apply ink to the head of the hummingbird in this stamp. This is the stamp number four in the set. I'm going to try to align or overlay the stamp as aligned with the image underneath as possible and then I press the stamp down for a few seconds. And I'm going to get something like that. And depending on the way you get this final image stamped, you will change the appearance of the hummingbird. Now I'm going to grab a black pen and I'm going to draw a circle on the eye of the hummingbird, like so. The ink of the pen doesn't blend and it doesn't bleed, so it's just perfect for doing this. 
I'm going to use this small stamp in the set to stamp the neck of the hummingbird. I already did it, but for some reason my camera stopped working, so I'm repeating. And you can do this several times until achieving the color you want. And when it's dry, I'm going to use early espresso ink again with too little water to add color to the head of the hummingbird. At this point, you will see the headers or the stamped headers in that face popping up. It's so beautiful. I hope you can see it in camera, but I don't think it's enough good to show you exactly how it looks. And if you go and make a line like this, you are not happy with the results. You just can leave the color by applying water and using a towel. And just like that, that line is going to be gone. Then I keep applying color. I apply some shadows here and there. And I also add a little bit of brightness there. And then, to blend the inks, I'm going to grab my brush with a little bit of water and I'm going to do this. Like spreading the ink from the edges of the image to the center, or towards the center. You need to bear in mind is keeping the edges of the image bold and pulling that ink towards the center of the image with a brush with a little bit of water. By doing this, you also add volume. I said dimension before, but it's volume, actually the word I should use here. <laughs> oh, sorry, and I hope you can understand me. But if you don't understand me, pay attention what I'm doing. For example, here, I'm making strokes in this way, in that edge of the image. That's the way I'm moving the hand. And when I need to soft the lines, I just go in a straight line like that, and that's it. If you don't understand me, you can just pay attention to the movements of my hand. Now I'm going to use a white pen, this is from Unibold, and I'm going to add some dots, just tapping on top of that area to make it look like feathers. You can leave the image like that. You can also use different ink colors, blue shadowing. We start making your own transformation to this stamped image. I'm going to use here this stamp, which is in the set, is this one. And I'm going to apply black archival ink to the chest of the hummingbird with the ink pad just like that. And then I'm going to stamp over this here. And if you see, I got it completely wrong. <laughs> but as the ink is fresh, I still have time to fix it. So I'm going to grab my marker and I'm going to blend the ink here. But once the permanent ink is dried, it won't blend, so I have to work quickly. And then I'm going to grab a, uh, my brush and I'm going to apply a little bit of water there to remove or to lift some color. Then I'm going to get the chrome cake, which is a lighter ink, and I'm going to apply it on top, just in random movements. You can keep applying or lifting the ink with water and a towel as you wish. You can get the brush wet and by moving the brush like, like so, you will create that fine line in the edge of the image. Or you can also add new edges with your stamping markers. I'm going to add a little bit something here in the eye. I hope you notice the difference with the white pen. Can you see that? It's a tiny difference, but it makes a difference. I leave it dry, and when it's dry, I can make any other alteration if I wish. Here I have a previous project, and if you notice, they look different but I use the same inks to make them. So I'm going to try and give it a more brighter look to this bird. And I'm also overdoing this image, just for you to see all the possibilities when you are doing this. Okay, so to add light or change the temperature of the image, you should use from blue inks, 
for a cold looking image, rise the temperature and making a warm composition, you can use yellow and orange inks. Now I have changed completely the shape here of the head of this hummingbird. I don't like it, so I'm going to grab my brush, I'm going to apply water and I'm going to lift the ink with a towel. And then I'm going to reshape the head using markers like so or a pen. This point, this is as much as I transform that image. And then I'm going to use the paint to reshape the head here. If I dare to do something like this 20 years ago in my art class, I will be in trouble. Honestly, in this case, nobody will be able to say that that's ink from a pen. Oh, shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> and the ink of the pen blends okay with the water-based ink of the stamping up marker. I will keep doing this, adding color, lifting color, and losing the track of the time. <laughs> when I'm happy with the image, I'm going to add color to the background. I'm going to use full party in first. And you have to pay special attention in not applying the ink on top of the image because the ink is going to bleed. That ink can be activated with water anytime. And then I use white wasabi ink to add some color here, just randomly and like so. I'm going to splatter some Pacific blue ink with water on the image, like so. I can leave it like that or I can also lift the excess of ink with a towel. And I'm done with this image. Now I'm going to stamp a sentiment. I choose any from any of these beautiful stamp sets here. And I have choose this one. I like the font. And I'm going to stamp it with early espresso ink. All I have to do is ink well the stamp and leave it on the cardstock for a few seconds, waiting for the watercolor paper to absorb the ink to get a sharp stamped image. And I embellish with thread. Then I grab a A4 sheet of paper, cut it in half, fold it in half, and then I paste the image on top using double-sided tape. I pasted the double-sided tape on the card base and not on the front panel. So in that way, I just place the image like so and press down when it's completely aligned. That's all, I hope you like this video and visit my blog for more ideas or inspiration or to order Stampin' Up! products anytime. Bye!